Playoff season is around the corner. Seating is very interesting, and it's gotten very interesting over the past couple of seasons, because until recently, seating really matters. Like, a one and a two seed or a three seed, these are the teams that you have to worry about, these are the contenders. We're not talking about a six or a seven doing anything. They're losing in the first round most of the time. Everything's changed now. There's a new precedent that's been set by certain teams like the Heat, like the Lakers, where we can get out of the play-in and then make a run to the conference finals, or in the Heat's case, to the finals. And now that's just a thing that can happen. And so it makes dark horses a little bit different because a dark horse back in the day would be like a four seed. But anyhow, let's talk about some teams that are gonna be lower seeds. I think all these teams are not gonna have home court in the first round. The first team I'm gonna talk about, Philadelphia 76ers. They are getting healthy at the perfect time. Maxi's back, Joel Embiid is back. He got a lot of time off from injury and he looks incredible. There's no rust. He came back at the perfect time because he can play a few games here, scale it up, and by the time he's playing the last game of the season, he can be ready for playoff time, and he doesn't have a whole season of wear and tear. He's not ready to break down. Always the issue with Joel Embiid. He has not shown that his game is built for the playoffs. Yes, this is true. That being said, if there's any year that it makes sense for the Sixers to break out, it's this season because they're not going in with a ton of pressure on them. You're going to enter the playoffs as a seven or a six. And yeah, they might be in the plan. It's very possible. But nobody wants to play this team in the first round. Joel Embiid, he's not going to be injury riddled. Nick Nurse is a legitimate coach. This is a big difference. The Sixers have never had a coach this good. They've never had a system like this. You've never been able to win with James Harden. Now Maxi is unleashed, different type of player. You know, lightning could strike. I think this sort of different circumstance really benefits them. The other Eastern Conference team that we have to talk about. And they're such a dark horse in general that like they almost don't qualify for this video because it feels like people should know and understand the Miami Heat that it doesn't matter where they seed. If they end up in the playoffs and Eric Spolster is coaching, Jimmy Butler is playing, Bam Adebayo is playing, they have shooters on the court, they can beat anyone. I've been hearing a lot of uh, the Heat the voodoo magic has run out. They just don't have it anymore. Jimmy's 34. This nonsense can't go on much longer. They're going to be out quick. It's going to be like 2021. Yada, yada, yada. Guys, this is, this is, they, they have, the Heat have everybody right where they want them because they always do this when no one thinks they will. And look at their team. Their team is super deep. Terry Rozier First of all, it's fantastic. They traded Kyle Lowry and got a guy that can drop 20 points, make tough shots, run an offense down the stretch. He's been awesome for them. He's exactly what they need. More scoring, more shot creation, more help for Jimmy Butler. Tyler Hero's coming back. Another guy, shot creation. And they can use him as much as they want. He's not a guy that's been available in the playoffs for them. He's coming back at the right time. Kevin Love just came back from injury. He's another guy. Great role piece and vet guy. That is going to help this team with spacing and rebounding and outlet passing and just a lot of little things. Haywood Highsmith, a lot of people don't know. He is going to shut down somebody in a series. He's going to be very important for the Miami Heat. Just wait on Haywood Highsmith, I swear to God. The Miami Heat are, are, are dangerously looming. This is what they do. Please don't be surprised and shocked when these guys upset and make it to the conference finals again. LA Lakers, I don't really know how dark of a horse they are. Do people buy them? They're still in 8th or... They've moved up, I think. They, well, they've been in ninth for a while, but my estimation was that they were going to end up in the play-in, but they could actually get out of it. And if they do, they'd end up playing the Thunder, which is hilarious because the Thunder are ducking them right now. They're losing games to try to get into three so they can play the Pelicans, but I don't think that's going to happen. I think the Pelicans suck and they're going to keep losing. And the Lakers are winning right now. They can't lose, so they could get up to six. They could definitely get up to seven or eight, but... This team can get out of the play-in real easy, and once they're in the playoffs, they got as good a team as almost anybody in the West. Not the Nuggets, but almost anybody. They can beat everybody else, in my opinion. I wouldn't want to play LeBron and Anthony Davis, and this is a good team around them. They're playing great basketball right now. Phoenix Suns. Speaking of teams playing great basketball, teams peaking at the right time, team I never believed in at all. 
all year. But listen, we got to face facts. This team has Kevin Durant and Devin Booker with the whole season pretty much of playing together. And they've gone through their struggles, but they have established a comfortability of how they run offense and how they play defense where guys just trust each other and they just play as a unit and they share the ball and they distribute usage evenly. So Bradley Beal has been able to play games and, and not get hurt, even though they don't really have a point guard, even though they don't really have an elite point of attack defensive player, even though they don't have a great center, they have components. They have individual player experience and coaching experience. And that matters. They know how to win games like this. They do have a a greater balance to their offense than they used to. It's not just all ISO and all pick and roll every play. And they're dangerous. Nobody wants to play Devin Booker and KD in the first round. Last team I want to talk about is the Dallas Mavericks, who at this point, I'm not really sure how much of a dark horse they are. I mean, they are one of the best teams in the league since the All-Star break, since acquiring Daniel Gafford, PJ Washington, just genius, great pickups, especially Gafford. I feel like this is like the perfect center to pair with Luka and Kyrie. You just throw the ball up near the rim. He's a walking alley-oop, doesn't miss shots, efficient, protects the rim, rebounds, energy, does a lot of different things that just kind of fits perfectly with what they do. They don't really have a third guy, but if their first two guys can be so good, they are playing as a unit. They are winning games. It does feel like they can beat anybody if Luka and Kyrie are both on. I don't think anybody would be surprised if they just flame out and suck in the playoffs. So maybe they apply less in this video. Maybe they're not as strong as as far as being a dark horse because they are a five seed and they are playing really well. And I think most people think they'll beat the Clippers in the first round. At this point, I would be compelled to take them. Like this is the year they get over that hump. They have Kyrie now. It makes sense. Peaking at the right time. uh, Dark horses. It's the year of the dark horse. Anything can happen, it feels like. This playoffs, it's going to be a lot of unpredictability. I feel like more so than usual. And that's what makes it so exciting because a lot of these teams that are more experienced and have a lot of the star power and guys that have dominated in the past. Different dynamic with some of the younger guys and younger teams being higher seeds. They are liable to get upset and anything could happen.